WBA, WBC heavyweight champion Mike Tyson tries to make a better show of it than that embarrassment of last March. We'll examine the boring hugging match with James Bonecrusher Smith. You'll see a different side of a heavyweight champion. Mike Tyson's dedicated commitment to those less fortunate. The challenger is former WBC champion Pinklin Thomas, whose hard road back to this title shot is wrought with controversy. Two determined fighters trying to reestablish their dominance in the heavyweight division. A 20-year-old freight train meets a 29-year-old former champion, given his last chance for glory. Mike Tyson meets Pinklin Thomas right here on HBO. Months ago, we sat in the same outdoor stadium anticipating a war, but the first shot was never fired. This crowd and our television audience were utterly disappointed. Now they say in show business, you're only as good as your last performance. If that's the case, Mike Tyson and Pinklin Thomas have the opportunity to give this near-capacity crowd something to cheer about all over again. Hello, everybody. I'm Barry Tompkins, along with Sugar Ray Leonard and Larry Merchant. Ray, first of all, let me be the last to publicly congratulate you. Welcome you back to your day job. Good to have you back. Let's talk about second things first, and the second thing, the fight between Mike Tyson and Pinklin Thomas. And perhaps the biggest question about the fight, which Pinklin Thomas will show up? The one that beat Tim Witherspoon for the title impressively, or the one who's been unimpressive in his last four starts? Well, Barry, believe it or not, I expect to see the real Pinklin Thomas. I think Thomas's biggest handicap is the fact that his consistency as far as his attitude and his concentration in the ring. In the past, he's always concentrated on other things outside the ring. Tonight against Mike Tyson, I'm expecting he's going to concentrate and use the jab. The jab will be the key punch to keep Mike Tyson off balance. The stage is set. Heavyweight champion Mike Tyson. I'd rather be knocked out than go to a fight like that, have to hold and, you know, show people that you're, show them that your emotions, that you're frightened and intimidated. And I want to perform because the last fight, uh, uh, the Tyson and um, uh, Bone Crusher fought was a waltz. And um, I don't plan to do the waltz. Anybody that takes the Bone Crusher Smith fight seriously and looks at it and say, well, this is Mike Tyson at his best and this is how. This is the fight that I expect to fight when I fight Mike Tyson. They're going to be in for a lot of trouble. I think that Tyson's so used to going in and, and racking guys on the chin and knocking them cold and walking away. Um, I think Smith just proved the point that, you know, the kid is not uh, invincible. I'm always there to fight. I'm always there to get the people their money's worth. He holds both the belts. So I respect him. I have to respect him because he's a champion. But the night of the fight, after the bell ring, I have no respect for him at all. We're live from the Las Vegas Hilton in Las Vegas, Nevada. It's time for the main event. Mike Tyson defending his WBA and WBC titles against Pinklin Thomas. It's scheduled for 12 rounds. It is a warm night here in Las Vegas as two champions, past and present, meet in a 14,000-seat prefabricated arena in the parking lot next to this city's biggest hotel. So many questions surrounding this fight. Which Pinklin Thomas will enter the ring? Off his last performance, will Tyson jump on the former WBC champion as he did against Marvis Fraser and Trevor Burbick? When the bell rings, we'll start to get some of the answers. Now Sugar Ray Leonard, let's look back on that fight. You saw a little bit of that waltz with Bone Crusher Smith. What do you suppose Mike Tyson learned from that fight? Well, I think Mike Tyson can anticipate a lot of fighters taking that same tactics, tying his man up. But what Mike has to do while the guys tie Mike up, the free hand work to the body. Those little punches hurt. They don't look like much, but they do hurt. All right, so now the stage does belong to Mike Tyson. Mike Tyson came upon the boxing scene and how he came on of two personalities, one inside the ring and one outside. Mike Tyson, 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 Mike
All great champions have their fans, but very few have been cheered and loved like this one. It's a great big thrill. Michael Tyson is here. These are members of YAI, the Young Adult Institute, a not-for-profit agency in New York that provides an array of services for the mentally retarded. Oh my God! Tyson was brought to the agency by Jim Bouton, a former all-star pitcher with the New York Yankees, who might best be remembered as the author of Ball Four. Today, Bouton devotes much of his time to YAI. As co-chairman of the sports committee, he called upon this young champion to help raise money for desperately needed resident housing. My idea was to bring Mike down here and introduce him to YAI, to let him see what's being done and to see how desperately these residences are needed. These are private homes, brownstones, uh, dormitory style living give these people a chance at a, at a normal, dignified life. But for over 1,400 New Yorkers, the wait to get into such a residence can be more than a decade. That's absurd, I think, for someone to have to wait 15 years just because they became a victim to something, you know, that they did nothing to deserve. They were just born that way. For those like Tanya, the long wait does not discourage her from dreaming of what it could be like. I think it, it would be, I think it would be fun. Especially you can have breakfast in the morning. You can watch TV. You can go out and do, do shopping or go out for dinner or something. That's, that's the kind of things I like and the kind of thing her newest friend would like to help her get. Thus, the creation of the Mike Tyson YAI Adopt-A-Home campaign, designed to raise necessary funds through corporate sponsorship. It's now turned into much more than a campaign. He's not just committed with his name and his title. He's really emotionally involved with these people, and that's what's so wonderful to see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, you're out. I'll have to say this is the biggest achievement of my my personal life now because I won a couple of fights, I beat guys that won the title, but that's something I strive for. But it's, it's nothing as doing something that's satisfying and just and you're seeing the outcome of people's faces and make them happy. I do love you, Mike. <laughs> I love this guy a lot. <laughs> and so do the parents, who now have hope that their children will always have a place to live. These homes are so important to people like myself, is in the future, we don't know what will happen. Someone like Mike is the only person that's good for this cause. Someone else will give their names, sign the papers, and that's the end of it. Mike actually puts his heart, his soul into it, and that's what you need the most. Someone like Mike. That's a great satisfaction for me, really, and it, and it comes from the heart. I never realized I'm just that kind of person. I get the biggest satisfy, satisfaction from giving than receiving. One, two. It's been said that sport does not build character. It reveals character. Mike Tyson has revealed the heart of a true champion and has provided for many a newfound hope. We'll keep trying, we'll keep striving. No, but we can always count on you. For sure, that's what champs are for. For good times. At bad times, we'll be on your side forevermore. That's what fans are for. We're just friends. That's my woman, man. I know what you're doing, yeah. Yes, I am just a woman. I've been here for sure. 
I believe for sure. I believe for sure. This would just our fault. Keep smiling. We'll keep trying. One more time. Go hard, man. <laughs> With our ears. Interesting look at an interesting and likable guy. And coming up, he won't be so likable to this guy, Pinklin Thomas, on the right of your screen. This for the WBC and WBA Heavyweight Championships. Mike Tyson and Pinklin Thomas. How far will it go? Well, 50 of these fighter, fight, fighters' fights, uh, 50 of the 60 that they fought together, have ended in knockouts. With more on this fight, here's Larry Merchant. Larry? There's an old saying in boxing, that a knockout puncher, if he doesn't knock the other guy out or down, will sure make him do a lot of funny things standing up. And in the six months that he's been the champion, Mike Tyson has had that effect on other fighters in and out of the ring. Item, Michael Spinks and Jerry Cooney have elected to face each other for less money than either one of them could have gotten for fighting Tyson. Item, George Foreman, Ernie Shavers, Joe Bugner, and others too humorous to mention are coming out of their rocking chairs hoping for one more big payday against Tyson. Larry Holmes could be next. Item, Trevor Berber came into the ring against Tyson looking like Darth Vader in, in bizarre black haberdashery. But it was Tyson who carried the terrible swift sword. Item, James Smith came into the ring as the bone crusher. But after he faced the speed and the power of Tyson, he quickly became a bone hugger. Which brings us to Pinkland Thomas, once regarded as the best of the heavyweights once regarded by Tyson's handlers as the last heavyweight they were ready for Tyson to meet. Tonight, we wonder whether he is really going to fight Mike Tyson, or whether he's just going to survive. And if he does fight him, can he survive? Nobody knows the trouble Pinklin Thomas has already had. He's just too young to understand. <laughs> I think I forgot about more than he probably know or will probably learn in anything. So he's got to go to school yet. And he haven't faced an opponent like me. He haven't faced the caliber of a fighter like me. He haven't faced a real champion. And I'm a champion. Bold words for Mike Tyson from a fighter who plummeted to anonymity after losing his crown to Trevor Burbick. The critics' inevitable cry. Pinklin Thomas is washed up. He's finished. He's returned to a life of drug addiction. Could his past in the streets of Pontiac, Michigan, where as a 14-year-old his marijuana use gave way to heroin addiction, have come back to haunt him? They haven't seen me take no drugs. Um, if they got a record of evidence of me using drugs, then show them. You know, um, he say, she say, has caused a lot of friction in my life. So if drugs weren't the issue, then what happened to the Thomas of the past, the heralded coming of a new champion, the gleaming hope for the pathetic heavyweight division? His disposal of Mike Weaver confirmed the belief that he would be the man to beat for years. And his success in the ring led to an attempt at a lifelong passion outside the ring. I wanted to sing. I sung as a kid. I sung in a group. So I had the talent, then I had the opportunity to sing at the time that I was in preparation of the fight. Then I had a guy write a song for me that sounded just like me. The words meant a lot when it was saying hanging on the promises because it was like, that's all I was doing was hanging on the promises. The song had a lot of meaning to me. It played a major role in setback for Pinkle and Thomas. Apparently, making a record wasn't enough of a diversion. Not only did he manage himself, but he took on two other fighters to supervise. Perhaps his most burning problem was the dissolution of his marriage to childhood sweetheart Kathy, the woman who helped him overcome his drug problem. I'm just glad now that, being that I, the turmoil that I faced in the hour of separation that came between me and her, that I was able to sustain and get myself in order to be strong and bounce back because it was part of a personal problem that uh, indulged in the Burbick fight that played, that taunted and haunted me. 
Amidst all this confusion, Thomas had to defend his crown against Burbick without his trainer, who left after the Weaver fight because of a financial problem. How would you feel walking into a deal? He'd say, gee, I wonder if I'm going to get paid. You know, that's kind of a little backward, you know, and, uh, and it, it's not dollars and cents. It's the idea of feeling of comfort. When the fight's over, you do your job, you do the best you can, and then the bread is there. That's the whole story. About a couple of weeks after the fight, I called Angelo and I told him, I said, you know, man, I said, the, the greatest mistake I could have made was not having you in my corner. I said, because in the fifth round of the Burbick fight, I missed you, and I really did. I really missed him, you know, because um, I can remember when I was working with Spoon and uh, we got to the ninth round, he said, three, three more rounds, baby, you're gonna be the champ. I can remember in the seventh round of Weaver fight when I felt it in the seventh round, I had him, and I mean, it was like magic working together, you know. That magic Thomas needs against Mike Tyson is back in his corner. The result of Sugar Ray Leonard's comeback bid signifies the remarkable influence in the presence of Angelo Dundee. Despite two recent lackluster victories, Dundee is convinced his man is back. The pink one that I want for Tyson is going to do a number on Tyson. I mean, a real number. I mean, it's just Tyson don't belong in the same category as a pink one Thomas. And I mean, I don't mean that sarcastically or be, berating a, a, a Tyson. Tyson hasn't been to school yet. Now, all the qualities of a, a Pinkland Thomas beats Tyson. He's got the best jab I've seen since Liston. It's a crushing jab. It, it go right through him. All I can tell you is that him in the right frame of mind, him in the proper conditioning, him not thinking of other things, is a heck of a fighter. He's the best heavyweight out there. But, of course, the question is, which one will show up tonight? Pinklin Thomas, just over 217 pounds. He hasn't fought in 83 days. Has an interesting philosophy. He says, I know what it is to lose. I know what it is to have. I know what it is to not have. I know what it is to be up, and I know what it is to be down. And I'd rather be up. And to make him be up, he would have to become the fourth heavyweight in history to ever regain the championship. Floyd Patterson did it against Ingemar Johansson. Muhammad Ali, of course, did it twice against George Foreman and against Leon Spinks. And Tim Witherspoon did it against Tony Tubbs in a dull fight down in Atlanta. So there he is, Pink Lon Thomas. And who will we see tonight? And there's Pinklin Thomas's record, just one loss. And let's just keep in mind, he lost a fight. A lot of fighters have lost fights. We've also seen some fighters, when they lose their first fight, go to pieces. And many observers feel that Thomas is what used to be called a shot fighter. No more zip and zest. We'll see. So Pinklin Thomas is in the ring now. We await the arrival of Mike Tyson. It's a fight that tactics are going to dictate an awful lot. And, of course, the big weapon for Thomas is the jab. Well, Barry, the jab is true. That jab is a very important jab. And in fact, to control the tempo of a fight against a fighter like Mike Tyson, you need a good left jab. And Pinklin Thomas, well, when he decides to use the left jab properly, has one of the most impressive and devastating left jabs in the business because it has a tendency to keep his man off balance. And for Mike Tyson, keep him at a distance so Mike can't crowd him. And then tonight, I'm expecting to see a lot of clinching from Pinklin Thomas, as we see here against Bone Crusher Smith. And Bone Crusher Smith was able to uh, clinch and tie up Mike Tyson, but Mike Tyson, in order to get away from there, the free hand, work it, work the body, because those punches hurt. And believe me, I know from personal experience. Mike Tyson has said that the audience, the crowd, the fans, people don't really remember too much about what happens after one fight. He had a bad fight in his own mind, even though he won all 12 rounds against Bone Crusher Smith, but he says people will forget it. If I have a good outing against Pinklin Thomas, people will forget all about it. He said that he went back home to upstate New York, and it, as he put it, I got my head chopped off by Kevin Rooney, his trainer. So we'll see if he learned anything, and we'll see what he brings to this dance. I found him, when we talked to him, to be very tight. And there he is, Mr. Primitive, coming in just in his black trunks, black shoes, no socks. And you see that he has no robe. You know, when I look at Mike Tyson, I get the feeling he's so dense that it's like picking up a baseball and finding it weighs 30 pounds. And there's his record, as you can see, unbeaten.
Mike Tyson, as always, comes in very worn up. You can see a nine-year age difference. Other than that, I think probably the only really startling number there is that Thomas came in at 217, and he does have a reach advantage of some three and a half inches. I don't really know that that will be any factor in this fight at all. And here is Punch Stat with another look at some quantitative analysis of their uh, punching habits. And as you can see, both punchers have thrown a wide variety of average numbers of punches depending on their opponents. And there are the jabs. Thomas throwing many more jabs. Tyson throwing many more mean, meaningful punches. Here are the rules in this fight, similar to the one in the fight you saw a moment ago, that for the IBF championship, with the one exception, of course, being that this will be a 12-round fight. 10-point must system. The judges only score the fight. There won't be a standing eight count. A fighter can be saved only in the final round by the bell, and there will not be a three-knockdown rule. Well, we talked about the fact that Mike Tyson comes in here, calls himself a gladiator. Here's a part of that whole look. Throwback. <laughs> and a coin tucked into his laces on his right shoe. I'll have to ask him about that. It must be really a sentimental know. piece. Meanwhile, let's get up now to the ring announcer, Chuck Cole. We'll get the introduction to the fighters, and we'll get on with this. Chuck? Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Las Vegas Hilton Sports Arena, where tonight, Don King Productions, in association with the Las Vegas Hilton Hotel and Miller Lite, presents the hard road to glory, destination ultimate. These bouts are sanctioned by the Nevada State Athletic Commission, Dwayne Ford, chairman. Commissioners at ringside are Mr. Sig Rogich, Herb Santos, Sammy Macias, and Freddie Little. And the executive director of that commission is Harold Buck. Representing the WBC at ringside, the president of that organization, Senor Jose Suleiman, and the supervisor, Mr. Spider Bynum of Texas. Representing the WBA at ringside is Mr. Nick Cariasados. The judges appointed by the Nevada State Athletic Commission for this, the next event of the evening, are Dalby Shirley of Nevada, Gordon Volkman of Illinois, and Harry Gibbs of England. The timekeeper is Mike Lachella. Counting at the knockdowns, Al Bicek. The attending physicians at ringside, Drs. Flip Pomansky, Donald Romeo, and Elias Ganeman. And your referee is Carlos Padilla. This is the main event of the evening. 12 rounds of boxing for the WBA, WBC, Heavyweight Championship of the World. Introducing, in the blue corner, fighting out of West Los Angeles, California, weighing in at 217 and three quarter pounds, with a professional record of 29 wins, one defeat, one draw, and 24 KOs, He's rated number one in the world by the WBC and is a former champion of that organization. Ladies and gentlemen, here is Pinklin, Pinky Thomas. And in the red corner, fighting out of the Catskills in New York, weighing 218 and three quarter pounds. He is undefeated in his professional career with 29 wins, no defeats, 26 KOs. He is the WBC, WBA, heavyweight champion of the world, Iron Mike Tyson. Short Tyson and Pinklin Thomas move to the center of the ring. Don't put too much stress, okay? okay? Okay, towel, towels. Where's your towel? Don't put too much grease. I sweat. Okay. I sweat. Okay, well, I'll uh, wipe a little bit. Okay, Tyson, Thomas, you're going to box for 12 rounds. You know the rules of boxing. Avoid using any kinds of foul. Don't throw any punches during the break. Is that understood? Seconds come out fighting. Will self-preservation kick in for Thomas, or will he come out trying to win this fight? Took a deep breath before the opening bell. Not a bad idea against Mike Tyson. Tyson is a six to one favorite. Tyson starts out with the right hand. 
Well, you notice there's a much more aggressive Mike Tyson than there was for Bone Crusher Smith. Uh, you notice that what happens inside here, we see some clinching. That's what exactly Bone Crusher Smith did. But inside, you may see that Mike Tyson still works, still throws punches. He's not giving Thomas a chance to unload that jab. What Angelo Dundee wants Pinkman Thomas to do is give him angles. Don't stand directly in front of Mike Tyson because you see here, Mike can throw punches from either angle and with great, a lot of power. Now Dundee said Tyson is a two-beat fighter. What he means by that is he comes in, he feigns left, he feigns right. There's a big left hand by Tyson, but Thomas is all right. You know why Tyson's able to nail so many guys is because he doesn't throw one or two punches. He throws a, a series of combinations, and one of those punches is going to land. The left hook there. Beautiful left hook. He has just not let Thomas uncork the jab. He's on top of him before Thomas can let the jab go. Well, I stated earlier, the key to this punch for uh, Thomas is the jab. He has not thrown the left jab to keep his man off balance. You see that it breaks your rhythm. The jab breaks the rhythm. Another big left hand. Thomas is hurt. We see more clinching here. And Tyson did not go to the body. And another left hand. Rarely do you see Tyson throw only one punch. Peter can't take too much. He's standing directly. He stands straight up, upright, and all Tyson's doing is nailing. His legs are not rock solid at this moment either. Watch for the uppercut, Barry, by Mike Tyson inside. I think he has one of the most devastating uppercuts in the heavyweight division. The hands of Pinkman Thomas, especially that right hand, is starting to drop to his side. Thomas has a long way to go in this first round, too, as you can see. 50 seconds left in a round. Long way. There's the uppercut. Pinklin Thomas. Thomas is in all kinds of trouble. Still 30 seconds to go in the round. What's the uppercut? It'll be all Thomas can do to get through this round. seconds remaining, so he will get through this one. Brutal first round. Well, Pinkman Thomas was true to his word. He came to fight. That was one of the You're most combative butted. rounds that we've seen Tyson right. in. But he's all right! Leave him the fuck alone! Quiet, Angelo. Well, leave Pinky, him alone! Pinky, look up at me. Leave him alone! God damn it! Leave this fucking man alone! Jesus Christ! Get away from this man! No, you're nothing! It was a left hand plus a right. It was a left hand, that was the hard punch. But Tyson kept coming, but uh, Thomas kept coming right back. Thomas is showing that he has something of a champion's heart. The last champion in with Tyson gave a feeble defense of his title. He's trying to make something happen. Which, of course, is, may not be the best way to fight Mike Tyson. I've never seen Angelo that angry of you, Ray. <laughs> well, Angelo has a tendency to get excited. Because I guess he doesn't want anybody to overreact. Well, Thomas did make something happen, I'll say that. It was the wrong something, though. Swelling and a bit of a cut under the left eye of Thomas. There's another left hand by Tyson. Because the ring physician was checking uh, Pink and Thomas' eye, and that's why Angelo got so upset. Now here we don't really see clinching. All the guys are doing is basically just standing there. Clinching now by uh, Pink and Thomas. And we see that Mike Tyson is still going to work. He's working the free hand. And that's what he's trying to keep him he told him to do. Angelo Dundee telling, Ty telling Thomas, just stay away from this guy. Stop up, stop up. 
I'm, ex I'm expecting to see a lot of guys tie up Mike Tyson. That was another huge left hook by Tyson. <laughs> you see what happens with the left jab, man? It stops the man's rhythm. And the less jabs you throw, the more Mike Tyson you want to see. Thomas continuing to lean on Tyson rather than fight him in long range. Well, what Pinkley needs to do is push his man off. He needs to back away. I don't think he needs to be there. Not inside, not with the uppercut that Mike Tyson possesses. Mike's trying to push him off, but then again, Mike should be working that free hand. The right hand of Mike Tyson is free. Crowd started to boo here, reminiscent of the last fight, of course. There's a left hook again. Break it up, break it up. Mike Tyson now is starting to jab Pickman Thomas. Well, Kevin Rooney told us that Tyson's jab was better than Thomas's. Said he knocked Alfonso Ratliff down with a jab. <laughs> now see, Mike needs to work whatever hand is free. He needs to work those little body shots. <laughs> Mike is more so content to stay there. <laughs> there was a good jab by Thomas. <laughs> Punching right hand. The jab sets you up for the right hand. That wasn't a bad round for Thomas. I thought he fought him more intelligently, used his left hand. What he hasn't been doing, Ray, is moving side to side. Well, he stands directly in front of Mike Tyson. That's why Mike Tyson getting those punches off. Get a little more with this guy here. You understand? Get the pressure on me. Get the jab, snap it, snap it. You're pushing it out. You're gonna snap it out. Get a little mean with this guy. Get inside now. You're gonna punch. You're gonna fight him before. But I think that's saying that you're gonna start to be watching this player like that. You must understand? And I thought that you made that round a little push. You still won. Come on, this guy. Come on, this guy. Not done. That's the good stuff. Huh? Watch it. What do you want? Get it. Nice and smart. You be first with everything. First, everything. You know Give him movement. Let's go. That's the beginning of the effort, sucker. Let's do it. Come on. Put on that jab and be a little more aggressive. Come on now. Let me fuck around with this guy. You understand? Come on. Be aggressive. Trying to get Thomas to be the first one shooting the left hand. That was Angelo Gundy's instructions. Well, and, there, and there it is. He has to be first, Larry, because he has to stop that rhythm of Mike Tyson. On the other side of that point, Kevin Rooney and Mike Tyson's corner saying that he's pushing his jab, that he's got to snap it more. <laughs> Angelo wants a little bit more uh, lateral movement from uh, Pickman Thomas. Watch out! Okay, break it up, break it up! Kevin Rooney is yelling Stop from his corner it. for Mike Tyson to punch out. He's to work that hand, work that free hand. Yeah. <laughs> oh, they know. Okay. Ray, is Mike Tyson now forcing the, the clinches? It seems to me he's going in sometimes to clinch. He appears to be more conscious of it. And in fact, he himself wrapped his arm around Pinkman Thomas' arm. I think Mike Tyson's so conscious of that now. But you see what happens, Barry. Every time that uh, Pinkman gives a little lateral movement, throws his jab, he's able to be a little more elusive from the punches of Mike Tyson. So as long as he stays in front of Mike, Mike's on land punches. Mike is like a, uh, he's perpetual motion. Swelling on both cheeks. There was a butt. Okay, watch your heads. No damage though, but you hear Carlos Padilla saying, watch the heads. He's going to say swelling on both cheeks. There's a good jab again by Thomas. That's what's going to break the rhythm. He needs to break the rhythm with the jab. <laughs> he's coming with the camera with the right hand also. But if he land those punches, you got to step right or step left. Looks as though there might be a little cut above the left eye of Pinklin Thomas. I think that's where the blood is coming from. We'll see. Okay, 
Thomas's people say that his jab is second only to that of Sonny Liston. I don't like what the Pinkley Thomas is doing. As he throws those, well, he tends to throw those two punches, you'll notice that he comes straight up. He comes upright. And that's in line with the left hook of Mike Tyson. I'm not sure that isn't cut over the left eye of Thomas. I think it's blood from somewhere else, just off the glove of Mike Tyson. 15 seconds remaining, round three. And Tyson is the one who seems to want to fight inside. And want to hold. For one of the few times since we've seen Mike Tyson, I gave his opponent the round. No, he's butting the heck out of you. I know. I he's got goat, but nail him. But fight. go first, go first. Don't lay in the clinches. I want you to go first out of everything, okay? <laughs> Guy Bum's getting desperate. He's trying to butt the heck out of you, you know what I mean? Trying to lose gas, thank It's all right. I want you to go first with everything. If he comes jumping at you, go for him. You're here, you're here, you understand? You're here. You're here. You're here. You're here. Mm -hmm. the Let's take a look at Pinkley Thomas's jab right here. We well, see what happens there. It just knocks you off balance, especially if it's a good stinging jab like uh, Pinkley Thomas possessed. It keeps you, it keeps you out of rhythm. He hasn't shown much fear of Tyson. Well, Thomas had said that Tyson has fought the C-class fighters and the B-class fighters, and now he's fighting an A-class fighter for the first time. I was really expecting to see a lot of clinching from Pickland Thomas because I think he, he picked something up from the Bone Crusher Smith fight. But he has to be a little busier than Bone Crusher. Thomas said he looked at all the 15 or all the fights that went the distance of Mike Tyson. He didn't look at any of the knockouts. And I asked him who fought him the best in your opinion, and he said Jose Ribalta and Quick Tillis. It was a right hand by Tyson that caught Thomas above the ear. See, Angelo wants Pinkland to be first, and okay, what Pinkland is doing, up, actually, step up, step up. he's fighting the same tempo of, of Mike Tyson, the same pace. He needs to pick his pace up a little bit, like he did just then. Mike Tyson retaliates with a few punches of his own. I mean, the left jab can go downstairs, it can go upstairs. It can actually be the punch bar to win the fight. Okay, bring it up. Check it. Stop. Stop. Let him go. Oh, no. Bring it up. Stop. Stop. Also, uh, uh, talking with Pinkler Thomas, he also said that the way that Mike Tyson holds his gloves close to his chin, he thinks he has the power to hit the gloves, and the gloves will actually hit himself. It does seem to be Mike Tyson, who really is the person who's tying up Pinklin Thomas, more than Pinklin Thomas is tying up Mike Tyson. What is that? Okay. Good right hand. Now the right hand is starting to fall. But it's not going to be one, two. It's going to be one, two, three, four. That's those kind of combinations you need to throw against Mike Tyson. And some body shots. Oh, very slowly, Pinklin Thomas is getting himself into this fight. It's starting to get a little bit of a rhythm here. And I think, really, he's starting to confuse Mike Tyson a little bit, right? He scored with that uppercut. Pinklin Thomas, no question about it, has a great chin. But I don't think he wants to prove that too often. Took a lot of punishment in the first round. From what I see, Pinklin Thomas controlled that round. 
and he's making the champion look a little bit sick right now. A little confused. Take this one. Take this one. Open up. Spit that out. Michael, you have a great jab. You're not using it at all. I want to see a snappy hard jab. You're not fighting yet. You're going to fight? We're going to fight it? We're going to bullshit. Huh? We're going to fight We're going to bullshit. Harold, how do you score this fight so far? Larry, three rounds to one, 39 to 36 in favor of Mike Tyson. I thought he won big enough to deserve an extra point in the first round. Uh, did good in the second and the third, and Pinklin had a good fourth round. I have it 2-2. Let's see some steam on that shot, okay? You got me? Come on. Come on. Good combination by Kevin Rooney on Mike Tyson. Well, Kevin Rooney wants to see more jazz from uh, Mike Tyson. And again, Pinklin Thomas is doing exactly what Angelo Dundee said. He is getting off first. He got off first that time with the right hand. And now the jab is effective. Blood under the left eye of Thomas. Not in a place you would think it would cause him a lot of trouble. Fighter become aware of being cut. I heard Thomas a couple rounds ago ask if he was cut. <laughs> you have a good cut, man. Just like that was a good right hand by uh, Pinklin Thomas. You have a good cut, man. You don't you don't worry about that if you're a seasoned professional. Unless it really bothers you. The swelling. Pinklin needs to bend a little bit more than these. He's too upright. You see that jab? You see, uh, again, it keeps him off balance. And now makes he's some reach. It's it also, start, it also starting to go side to side pretty well, too. That jab, as long as you use it consistently, it keeps anyone off balance. And it'll make you reach in, your right hand will land. Step up, step up. And you'll find it'll be a much easier fight. Kendall Thomas really is almost starting to control the tempo of the fight. Tyson is almost fighting Thomas's fight rather than the opposite. And I've never seen that happen. I was expecting to see more punches thrown by Mike. And in fact, he needs to throw more punches inside. <laughs> Tyson trying to use the jab as Kevin Rooney was exhorting him to do. Little movement, little footwork from uh, Pinklin Thomas. And jab. Bring him with the. Okay, okay. Watch your head, okay? Carlos Padilla tells Tyson to watch the head. And Thomas again. Impressive in this okay, round. Bring it up. Long left hand by Tyson. Thomas is just not letting Tyson rough him up like Tyson has been able to do at will against other opponents. And I think it's fair to say lesser opponents. Thomas is holding him a little bit. I'm waiting to see Mike Tyson throw that bolo punch, kind of bolo, double right hand, right hand to, right hand to the body and right hand to the head. That's another round for Pinklin Thomas in my book. Bad intentions, bad like intentions that. baby. Bad intentions. What's the matter? I'm getting tired. I'm getting tired. Take some water here. Where's the right hand? Huh? Where's the right hand? Spit it out. Spit it out. Spit it out over here. Drink this. Yeah. Give me that towel, man. Listen. Bad intentions. You gotta go with punch your bad intentions. Hard. Go to the body. Hard. Hard. You use your jab a little bit. A little. Now, let's see what Tyson does here and why he's having so much problem. He was coming underneath Thomas to avoid the jab, and he is the one forcing most of the clinches right now, Ray. Right. Use that jab and use that by him, but throw the punch with bad intention. Bad intention. Let this guy fall into the fight here. Now, look, you got to yeah, pick up the face. I don't want you in the clinches. You're doing fine, but you're blowing it because you're laying in there. Don't get it. You're laying in there. I don't want you laying in there. I want you fighting this guy and boxing him. Put 
some pepper in our left hook. You're hitting them with the hook off the jack. You don't know it, Pete. Keep that jab right there. Keep that jab right there, man. Don't let him get away. Yeah, yeah, Something has happened to Pinklin Thomas's glove. Yeah, we got And we wonder now what's happening here, whether he thinks Thomas is tired and he's done something. Remember the famous incident with the cut glove of Muhammad Ali when he fought Henry Cooper. You also remember early in this round that Mike Tyson commented to his corner that he thought Thomas was getting tired. So <laughs> I'm just wondering whether Angelo is pulling something right here. Well, in fact, it was, it was as a result of the business with Ali and Cooper that they installed a rule, a rule, pardon me, I got the bad throat dog here, but that they installed a rule that you have to have another glove at ringside. So the Dundee rule may be biting Dundee here. Because of that fight, because of the Ali Cooper. It seems that this glove was split, but we didn't see it. We haven't seen the glove, but we sure are seeing Pinklin Thomas getting some time. You know, Ray, usually the way Mike Tyson fights and with his enormous presence, this this Fort Tyson moving at you, uh, it's like he has such strong music that the other guy dances to his music. But in this fight, Thomas is not dancing to his music. He, he's shutting the music off, and he's creating the tempo right now. Well, Pinkley Thomas is starting to fight his fight and using the jab. And what actually he's doing, again, like I stated earlier, he's throwing Mike Tyson off. He's breaking Mike Tyson's rhythm. And Angelo told uh, Thomas in the corner, don't stand the clutches. Move away. Spin the guy off. See, Angelo doesn't want Pinkley Thomas here because he's afraid of the headbutt. He wants Tyson, he wants Thomas to spin this man off, get back on his bicycle, but not move too much, and use the jab. This is the sixth round, we're going 12. Okay, bring it up, bring it up, bring it up. Step up, step up. Thomas has answered one question, and that is which Pinkland Thomas will show up. It's the one that beat Tim Witherspoon. Win or lose. <laughs> and the question now, of course, is which Mike Tyson is showing up. I think Mike Tyson, what happens, he tries to impress the public. I mean, he thinks it's an obligation. He has to understand the key to, to winning is do it your way. There was a big uppercut by Tyson. And the way he's doing his way now, but he has to forget about the crowd. Do it his way. And don't be embarrassed by his performances. Or a certain performance. And a left hand and that staggered Thomas. And a right hand behind it. Thomas in trouble again. And now Tyson moves in for the kill. Two uppercuts and a left hand. Thomas trying to hold on. Serious trouble. And down he goes. It's over. It is over. Thomas did not make it by the count of 10. You heard in the corner before that round, Kevin Rooney saying, start throwing punches with mean intentions. In effect, he was saying, can those jabs I've been telling you to throw for the first five rounds and start throwing some real punches. And when he did, he did. I would also point out for those who care about such things that Tyson was a six to five favorite to end the fight before the end of the sixth round, which he just did. Well, that was a real test, I think, for Mike Tyson. Well, he fought a guy that had the right uh, formula supposedly to defeat Mike, and well, that was a jab to tie him up and to give him lateral movement. But I think what happened, he eventually, Pinkle Thomas eventually got caught with one of those powerful blows and the rest was history. Well, Ray, you were saying that Tyson could probably go to the uppercut. I think you said that in the second or third round, and it took a couple of rounds, but when he got to it, he got to it. Watch this uppercut. Well, the reason I said the uppercut would be a fact is because Pinkin Thomas at times would lean inside, and that uppercut, it was an accurate punch, and a very powerful punch. 
Now let's take a look at the knockdown. You know, we talk about finishers, and I've always said you were a great finisher. Well, here's a guy who doesn't have to take a back seat. Well, he levels his punches. I mean, he gets so much uh, leverage behind each punch. Mike Tyson can fight southpaw. He can fight uh, orthodox. He puts his hip behind. Look at him. He's just putting his entire body behind the punch, and it's, he's so relentless. Again, the uppercut, left hook. He's still in position to throw more punches, and it's just a matter of time. That left hook there was deadly. Just a great finisher. I mean, once his man is hurt, he is gone. Well, what, what Mike Tyson is such a threat to the heavyweight division is because he is such a good finisher. He gets you hurt. He doesn't left, left, uh, let you off the hook. Well, Kevin Rooney is trainer, and we always talk to the fighters, of course, and talk to Mike and talk to Kevin. And Kevin told us this guy's going to be champion as long as he wants to be champion. And it's obvious he wants to continue being champion. First time that Thomas has ever been knocked out. Right now, let's go up to the ring announcer, Chuck Hall, for the official decision. Chuck. Ladies and gentlemen, the time. Two minutes of the sixth round. Referee Carlos Padilla stops the bout. The winner by a TKO and still WBC, WBA, heavyweight champion of the world, Iron Mike Tyson. And let's go up to Larry Merchant now, who is with the winner, Mike Tyson. Larry. Mike, until the end, that was tougher than it was supposed to be. Was it tougher than you thought it would be? Mike. Good fight, man. Good fight. Thank you. Good fight. Good fight it's my pleasure to give you a shot at the title. You deserve it. Answer this question, bro. Let me start again. It, it looked like it was much tougher than it was supposed to be up until the end. Of course, but you know, I saw him something in previous fights, he would get tired. And I said, if I knock him out early when he tied, he won't have no defense and it'll be spectacular. And I knew he would get tired somewhere around the seventh round, because I saw in the last two fights, he was gasping for a little air. You said before the previous round that you thought he was getting tired. I knew he was getting tired. But he seemed to establish his jab pretty well and frustrate you quite a bit while you were trying to box with him in those rounds. Oh, as you know, no. But as you know, I was getting my jab off too. And as you know, he has a great jab, like everyone knows. You know, and he's a great fighter. And I feel I'm the best fighter in the world because I beat the best fighter in the world. Everybody gave him the regards. Do you feel he was the second best heavyweight out there? Absolutely. Now I proved it. Was, when Kevin said to you before the round, start throwing punches with mean intentions, it sounded to me like he was really saying, forget that jab I've been telling you to throw he, all this no, time. No, no, no. He wanted me to use the jab, but I was trying to convince him, which is my fault, and I should never do that. He was getting tired. And I just said, give me one more round. Give me one more round. Now do whatever you say. Okay. Mike, let's take a look at the knockout sequence of punches. You describe it for us. Well, I saw I, I could sneak the uppercut in there, and I was just working it to the body, to the head. I saw it was hurt, and I just put everything I together. He was tough, but I thought I'm going to put him together. And as you see, I'm putting him together, boom. You hit him some decent shots up to then. Were you surprised that he took him as well no, as he I knew, did? I saw him fight Weaver, and Weaver was the greatest knockout puncher around when he was fighting. And he took Weaver's best shot. What is your feeling of satisfaction uh, compared to the last time we had you here? Well, I opened up and I was using my head more. And now when I go to gym, I don't have to listen to too much criticism, even though I'm going to hear it. Are you okay. looking forward to fighting Tony Tucker and unifying the whole absolutely, heavyweight division absolutely. next? Absolutely. I want his title so bad it's not even funny. Okay. We hope it's not funny, or we hope maybe it's funny, but we'll hope to be there. Thank you, Larry. Thank, Thank you, and congratulations again. Back to ringside. All right, right now that it's said and done, what do you think? He beat a good heavyweight. He beat a quality heavyweight. Still impressed as you were with Mike Tyson. I would think you have to be just based on the guy he fought tonight. Well, I was impressed with the fact that Mike Tyson all of a sudden went back to what got him there. You know, power, relentless pressure, and not letting up. I think sometimes Mike, well, in the past, have become too cautious. But his, his biggest factor is staying aggressive and being tenacious. But he did that in the first round. It looked like he was going to put him away in the first round. I think Thomas probably took his best shot. And then Thomas started to dictate the tempo of the fight, and it just seemed like a matter of time for Mike Tyson. At least that's his attitude. Well, I think it still was a good fight because Mike Tyson took his time. Pinker Thomas gave him problems because his jab, when he did use it, the jab was keeping Mike off balance. When Mike got inside, they both would clinch. Then all of a sudden, the sixth round, Mike started letting go of those shots to the body, to the head, until eventually he was able to wear down Pinker Thomas. Looking for his one spot, and when he found it, he took advantage of it. And as we mentioned, you were looking at a great closer, a guy who really knows how to finish. Here are the punch stat totals. Mike Tyson threw 247 punches. That's about the norm for him. He averaged a 53 percentage percent 
effectiveness rate. Thomas, on the other hand, threw a lot of punches. 42% not quite as effective, maybe not quite as sharp with that jab as he normally would be in his better fights against Tim Witherspoon. But I really have to think that Thomas really did a pretty good job. He showed up, he did the job, because Mike Tyson has always told us that guys say they're going to do this to me and they're going to do that to me, and then comes fight night and they don't do any of it. They just want to waltz or want to hug each other. Well, that wasn't what it was tonight. Thomas wanted to fight, and I think Mike Tyson got all he wanted from Pinklon Thomas. Now let's get back up to the center of the ring and Larry Merchant. Larry? Earlier tonight, I commented that too often it seems that the water comes to the top in the heavyweight division, but in this last fight, we did see the cream come to the top. Michael Tyson, obviously the best heavyweight in the world right now, although he did appear more vulnerable in this fight than he has in the past. So maybe someone who does come along with true boxing skills, great legs, and good nerve will give him even more trouble than Pinklin Thomas did for a few rounds tonight. There's one thing about Mike Tyson that brings a smile to my lips. It's the habit that all of us have of when a man reaches some sort of perfection or domination, or even a team for that matter, we first want to applaud them and high-five them and celebrate them and tell them how great they are. And about 10 minutes later, we go around saying, is there anybody out there who can beat him? Well, right now, in all honesty, I'd have to say that the only one who can beat Mike Tyson that we know of is Mike Tyson. If he takes care of business, not even Mike Tyson can beat himself. Barry? Well, Ray, let me ask you the question that Larry Merchant just posed. Can anybody beat Mike Tyson? Well, I just retired. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. You were only talking about 175, right? Although there was a hot rumor. Let me tell you, it's good to have you back, Chair. Good to be back, too, Barry. Thank you. And it's full time, right? Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, that brings this broadcast to a close. Then we want to remind you to stay tuned following HBO's World Championship Boxing coverage for Ray Bradbury's Theater and then The Hitchhiker on both the East and the West Coast. And be sure to join us nine days of coverage of tennis's most prestigious event, Wimbledon 87, premieres Monday, June 22nd. Join Arthur Ashe, Billie Jean King, Barry McKay, Larry Merchant, and me. We'll take you right through the semifinals right here on HBO. So for Larry Merchant and Sugar Ray Leonard, I'm Barry Tompkins saying so long from Las Vegas, Nevada. The executive producer of HBO Sports and the producer of tonight's telecast is Ross Greenberg. This show was directed by Mark Payton. The feature producers were Rick Bernstein, Steve Salvatore, and Mike Whalen. The associate producer was David Harmon. The assistant to the producer, Ryan McDonald. And the production manager, Ralph Cohen.